Hello, it is Saturday, August 26th, 2023. I'm Chris Remond. Welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Saturday crossword today, which means it may well be the most difficult crossword of the week. It's a themeless puzzle. And um, that often does come with misdirection and punniness and all sorts of things. We'll find out. Uh, in any case, this themeless and very possibly tricky edition of the Dilly Solve has been brought to us by Noah Bizanson, Madeline Lee, Alan Blunder, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Salt Patreon campaign, for their generous support. They're keeping this channel going and sustaining the series. I'm very grateful to them for that. And if you would like to contribute to the channel in that way, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve, or of course you can find the bonus videos available to patrons, such as yesterday's uh, weekly mini puzzle pseudo speed solve, in which I solved the last seven days of the New York Times mini crosswords uh, fairly quickly. And that's up there for patrons as well as the other videos, of course, and for benefactors, the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses uh, official mug. So do check that out if you think you'd be interested in those things. And thank you so much to everybody who has. And um, uh, and yes, thank you. <laughs> Don't know if I was going anywhere else with that, but thank you to everybody who is a patron. There's also, of course, the Daily Solve Discord chat server, which you can join. It's a nice, friendly chat community. And there's a link in the description field underneath the video. And of course, thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel on YouTube. Please do subscribe if you haven't. It's a big help and it's uh, an easy thing to do and it will keep you abreast of these videos. All right, let's get on to the crossword. This is a Saturday construction by Adrian Johnson. This is, I think, his fourth puzzle for the New York Times. And it was edited, of course, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's see what's in store for us today. Let's start solving. To behave in a way suitable to one's situation is to act one's age. That's not necessarily the situation one's in per se. Uh, let's look at the shorter crosses here. Early song subject. This is, sorry, I just realized this is a very airy grid. It's a very sort of open grid. We don't have any grid spanning answers, but we, you know, it's, it's, it's not very, um, it's not very populated by black cells. Anyway, early song subject. It depends what they mean by early, I suppose. Um, early historically or early sort of early years. I guess the ABCs could be. Trick off and pull. Let's see if any of those help with that. Five minute rock classic with an iconic organ intro. Um, this could be. Uh, I think this would fit in the space given. This could be by the Who, um, Baba O'Reilly, which is often referred to by the lyric Teenage Wasteland, which is repeated many times in the song. Is this how it's spelled, or do we need two L's? I can't quite... Uh, no, no, maybe it's... I think it might actually be this, R-I-L-E-Y. I think this is actually... How the name is spelled. But let's see if we can get any. So this early song subject, ABCs, street food source, a, uh, my first thought was taco truck, but taco wouldn't really be a correct answer here. Um, street food source, I'm not sure. One way up, perhaps. One way up. Best-selling novelist, Hogue. Oh, I'm sure I, I'm sure I know this, but I can't, I can't think what it is. That's annoying. Very busy informally. So, uh, so slammed or so. Country where the oldest human skull, circa 1 million BC, wow, was found in 1997. That's kind of amazing. Uh, well, surely it'll be somewhere in Africa. So it could be Eritrea. Um, Trying to think if I can think of any other possibilities. I don't think I can. Let's see if that let's see if that works. Aromatic fire feeders. Aromatic fire feeders. Pine uh pine um I think it'll be pine something because pine is aromatic and you could imagine a forest fire or something uh being fueled by pine what? What would what would fit here with the plural? 
I can't think. <laughs> it's very sort of up and down solve so far, isn't it? Plant that contains chlorophyll but lacks a stem and leaves. Oh, it must be must be alga, um, you know, like algae from uh, from the ocean or a pond or something. That would make sense. Uh, put back into service. Re reuse or re. Is there anything else that could be reuse? Sounds plausible to me. Take off in pole position, perhaps. Oh, st a strip tease. Oh, that's funny. So uh, obviously the question mark serves as a pun indicator and the takeoff here means removing clothing. And then in the pole position could be a pole in a, you know, in this case, in a strip club or something. Okay, so there we go. Uh, prepared as, a, as lab findings for a report. Typed up? Yeah, yeah, okay, that, that sounds right. You typed up the results. In pain at the end of a race, say, uh, cramping up, right, okay. This is a very, very haphazard solve. I'm sort of all over the place here. Just going back and forth. Street food source is a cart, a food cart, right. Why didn't that immediately occur to me? One way up, perhaps, a T-bar, one way up a, um, uh, a, ski, a ski lift, that sort of thing. You could ride the, you know, hold on to the T-bar as it pulls you up. Oh, Tammy, Tammy Hogue is a best-selling novelist. And then, oh, why did I put an S here? What? Oh, right. Okay. Because I thought, I thought very busy informally was going to be so something, but it isn't. It's hopping. The place is hopping. It's very busy informally. There we go. Okay. So if you're not online to a text or maybe you're IRL. So in other words, let's, let's meet up IRL. Let's meet up not online, but rather in real life. Pine. So it is pine. Pine logs. Oh, there we go. Of course. Yeah. Don't know why that was elusive, but it seems to have been. Deceive so as to deflect. Deceive so as to deflect. So to sort of mislead someone or to lead them on or to uh, something on maybe. On a streak. You're naked? <laughs> Seems to be a bit of a bit of a theme in this crossword. Uh, so yes, you're streaking. You're you're running around without clothing. Flips over, goes gaga. Right. So the over um, it did actually mislead me for a moment there because I was thinking flips over as in flips over a table, but that's not how over is being used here. Not exactly. the The fact that it's in this parenthetical bit here means we're going to apply it also to the answer. So we say. If you flip over something, you go gaga over it. We add that to both. So you, in other words, you're crazy about something. You, you really enjoy it. Elderly relative informally. A grand, maybe, your grandmother. And to be the coolest is to rule, I suppose, with some, I don't know, sort of, what, 90s slang, maybe? It dots the I in the Ohio State Marching Band's spelling of Ohio. The sousaphone? Wow, I certainly, certainly not knowledge I had, but uh, marching bands tend to be very uh, brass heavy, and a sousaphone is a brass instrument that fits here. So uh, it dots the I in the Ohio State Marching Band spelling of Ohio. So I guess this just means the sousaphone player stands, you know, in, in the sort of human spelling out of the word Ohio, the sousaphone player stands where the I dot goes. All right, to deceive so as to deflect. Oh, to shine on? I think that's what that I think that's what that means. I've never really used that phrase, but I've I've heard it here and there, and I think I think that's basically what it means. To shine somebody on, to deceive them so as to deflect their, you know, their, their maybe what they're trying to determine or what have you. Troublemaker. A hellraiser? <clears throat> that looks right to me. Oh, I see it now. That seems plausible. If you're out, you're asleep, you're taking a nap. Uh, first NFL quarterback to pass for 50,000 yards. Oh, I have no idea. Uh, unsurprisingly. Mexico City to Cancun direction. East. Uh, well, it'll end with east, won't it? So... Ceremonial plates for the Eucharist. I don't know. Do I know what this is called? Or is it the, the potter, maybe, for father or pater? Um, I don't know. 
I think that is a kind of plate, a pater. Where do I, where is that memory coming from? I'm not sure, but I think that, I think that might be correct. Let's, let's see if it works. C star. There's a question mark here. So something is going on in a punny sort of way, and I'm not sure what it is. Uh, this will be, this middle letter of Mexico City to Cancun direction will be uh, S or N for south or north. I, mean, I, I sort of think S looks more plausible, but, oh wait, maybe it's Marino, Dan Marino. That is a name I've heard of. So this isn't Gran, it's Graham. All oh, right, okay. Gran, it's in Grandma, I suppose. All right. So, right, okay. Amazingly, I have I have managed to put this together. I think it must be Dan Marino, who's a, who's a famous NFL quarterback, I guess. I mean, I, I certainly heard the name. So there we go. East by Northeast is the Mexico City to Cancun direction. And then that was a lucky poll for me. Um, obviously, for some people, that would be very easy. Um, C star. Um, I'm, I'm not quite seeing it, but let's finish this off because this is sort of a closed corner over here. Like an unconvincing argument, say that you could say that's a thin argument. It's unconvincing. Worth one and a half or two stars. And that's so-so. You could say it wasn't, wasn't particularly impressive. And if you fully grasped something, you knew it. And then finally, clicks that aren't nice to hear. <laughs> Tisks, but uh, as is often pointed out to me, it's not, it's, it's more of a reflection of, it's an onomatopoeic description of the sound. But often when I do that, it doesn't come through in the microphone. But hopefully it did that time for you. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, it's a bit of a scold is what that is. And fully grasped, you knew something. And then, all right, we saw that already. Spanish verb, sp Spanish verb that conjugates to somos for first person plural, ser. Uh, I don't actually know what that verb is. Is it sleep or no? I'm not sure. Okay, sorry. Well, there we go. That's the answer anyway. Uh, C star, here we have dolphins facility. Um, I'm not sure. This could be dolphin the animal, of course. Um, which was my first thought, but it could also be the, there's a U.S. football team. Is it the Miami Dolphins? Is that even maybe who Dan Marino played for? Am I complete? I, I, that, sorry, I apologize. I shouldn't even speak. I, it's so likely that I'll get something wrong. Anyway, I don't know what the answer is, but let's look at this. It looks like ski. Product from Jamaica. It's not ski, it's ska, the music genre. So there we go. Jazz is up. Adds, um, adds something. Although this doesn't look very likely, does it? Um, rig up. To rig something up is to erect it or to... Uh, I'm not sure. What about over here? Fit to serve. Fit to serve question mark. Fit to serve. I'm not quite seeing it. Um, seeds may go down in them. Seeds may go down in that. Is this something to do with a tournament seed or something? Seeds may go down. I'm not sure. Pub order in brief. In Okay, in brief. Well, pub order, my first thought was ale, but that's not in brief. That's that's a full word. So it could be an IPA, an India pale ale. That's a something you might order at a pub that's been abbreviated. Let's see if that helps us up here. Fit to serve. Oh, edited? I don't know. You could say that piece was fit to serve. It was edited. I, I don't really think that that works. Seeds may go down in them. Up. I'm just not seeing what this is. Model Boyd of London's swinging 60s era. Patty Boyd, I think. Sounds familiar to me. Let's see if we can justify that. Cast iron cooking directive. Sear. You could sear something on a cast iron pan pretty common. Una y blank vase, again and again, Spanish. Um, oh, I really wish I knew this, uh, but I don't think I do. I'm not, I'm just not sure. Oh, that's so frustrating. Rig up. I don't know this either. Oh, I've sort of run out of steam on this 
second half of the crossword sort of bisected diagonally. Course list. Um, it could be a menu or it could be um, courses in a school, something like that. Three in Q3, e.g. abbreviation. Months. <clears throat> Three months in a, in the, in a quarter of, of a year, abbreviated to MOs. Uh, jazz is up. Language spoken in Middle Earth. Well, Middle Earth is where the Lord of the Rings takes place. So, uh, Elvish, I don't know, Dwarfish, there's probably one. Um, I don't know any other. I can't think of any other languages that I think would be spoken in Middle Earth. I'm sure there are many. Uh, I, I don't know. Is there a Hobbit language? I don't, I don't know. They usually end at the ankle. Something socks. Uh, PE socks. I don't know. That's sort of the red. I've never heard of that, but it might be a real thing. Reebok rival. So, I mean, it could be the animal Reebok, but I'm guessing it's the shoe manufacturer. Uh, Av Avia. Isn't that, that's a Reebok rival. There's also Nike. Um, I guess Nike is probably more commonly cited. Uh, let's see if that if that helps with anything. Blank, uh, no, sorry, that's not blank, for instance. That's just the phrase, for instance, coming after something. Um, beaver's display. Uh, it could be a dam, but there's a question mark there indicating some kind of pun, so maybe not. They're often worn at long public events. Mic headsets or something. I don't know. I'm trying to make this K fit. Take two. Okay, I, I don't know if this is right. Oh, where do I find a way into this puzzle, into the rest of this puzzle? This might change your mind. LSD, maybe? Kind of a psychotropic drug. Let's see if that helps. On the blank. On the dare. On the date. Let's say on A, I think, for each of those. Remedies for blowouts. Uh, spare tires, right? You're, you can have a, a blowout, a flat tire, and then replace it with a spare. Okay, so that that's that's good with LSD there. Hotlines? Question mark. In the morning, blank the no blank the morning. Sorry. Oh, top of, top of the morning. So right, sort of stereotypically associated with Ireland, I guess. Um, and the. Morning being the G and morning being alighted there is a uh, sort of points to the fact that the F in of is as well. On the blank, on the on the door, on the dope, on the uh, I'm just not oh dole. You're on the dole. Maybe you're you're um, uh, you know stand you you your welfare recipient perhaps. So like the football field in Australian football, I unsurprisingly don't know much about Australian football. I'm guessing based purely on this grid fill, it's an oval. So hot lines, love something, love woman with, oh, enfant. So sort of looks like infants at a glance, but the way it's spelled is actually enfant in, in French, for, uh, children in French. So a mere mother in French. There we go. Lots of uh, French and Spanish today. So we had two Spanish clues and a French one so far. Uh, grave matter. Grave matter. Not quite seeing it. Fit to serve. And seeds may go down in them. Oh, upsets. An upset. So an unsurprising, or sorry, rather a surprising victory. There we go. So a seed... A, you know, team or player who was a seed might go down in an upset match. Okay, so grave matter is oh tombs tombstone, right? You could have a tombstone marking a grave. So fit to serve is edible, right? Of course, you're it's fit to be served. It's edible. It's uh, fit to serve to somebody. They can eat it safely. So hot lines are a love letter. There we go. So lines of text. Um. And then the question mark, of course, indicating a bit of punnery, as this does as well. Although this seems, I guess I see, because fit to serve has such a strong idiomatic meaning 
in the sense of somebody being fit to serve in a military context or something. So I guess the the food meaning, you know, invites that question mark. Anyway, let's let's keep going. So oh, uni y otra vez. There we go. Uh, I was trying to. I figured it would be the word for other in Spanish, and for some reason I just couldn't think of it. Even though I definitely know that this is how you say say other in Spanish. So that was <laughs> frustrating brain lapse there. But anyway, there we go. That's again and again in Spanish. Rig up, engineer to engineer something to rig it up to oops to uh, put it together. All right, jazz is up. Animates. There you go. You animate something. You put some life into it. Language spoken in Middle Earth is. Does this help me? What do I think this is? Goblin something or? Oh, I just don't know. Course list dinners. List of dinner options. Oh, gnomish maybe. I don't even remember there being gnomes in Lord of the Rings, but I guess there must be. Okay, they usually end at the ankle in in seams of uh, you know trouser leg, for instance. Okay, there we go, and. So let's see, what can I do here? For instance, to name one, to name a, to name a few, right? You could say, here, here are some examples, for instance. Here are some examples to name a few. So the Reebok rival probably is Nike then. And then Beaver's display, I don't know. I mean, obviously I'm thinking of the animal, but I mean, maybe there's a sports team called the, the Beaver's? I don't know. It seems entirely plausible. They're often worn at long public events. Well, Mike still fits there, but I don't know what the rest of it would be. Take two. Take two. C star. I'm, I'm kind of wondering based on the question mark, is there a television program called C and this is Someone who stars in it, or something like that. Uh, Portman, Natalie Portman, is she in something called C? Does not ring a bell to me at all. But I'm just trying to think of a star, you know, celebrity. Does that work with this Beaver's display? I don't know. This doesn't seem very useful to me. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, this looks like initial beavers display. Initialism? That doesn't seem to have anything to do with beavers to me. They're often worn at long public events. Okay, I'm, this has been a tough corner of the grid for me, hasn't it? If you're going hard, you're at it, which is certainly feels like the case with me in this crossword at the moment. Reebok. Oh, another Reebok rival. Well, okay. I didn't even think of an F possibility with that other one, so... Um, I, I don't know. Have you blank? Have you ever done such a thing? Inapt locale for this answer. <laughs> Inapt locale for this answer is... Um, this is very meta-referential, isn't it? This looks like initiative. Oh, beaver's display. Is in a busy beaver showing initiative, I suppose? That must be what that is. Uh, does that help me with anything else? Okay, well, this isn't. this is not Portman, so... Porsche, por, portion? I don't know what that is. Dolphins facility. Uh, I don't know what's going on at all down here. Reebok rival. Maybe I have something else wrong. Inapt locale, locale for this answer. Take two. Fresh, a fresh start. Take two, you're starting over again. It's a fresh start. Oh, Fila, that's a that's another sports shoe manufacturer. Okay. In-app locale for this answer. West, right, okay. I guess because we're over on the eastern border of the grid. So there we go. Very good. Uh, they're often worn at long public events. Fake smiles, right, there we go. So C-Star Portif, maybe this isn't Pater's. It occurred to me that I put that in ages ago and never rethought it. Pontiff? Oh, see, yeah, it is Pontiff. The Holy See. It's the Pope. Ah, oh, so this isn't, so this is Peyton's. Okay, well, this doesn't ring a bell to me at all. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking with Peters, but anyway. Dolphins facility. So, oh, sonar. Dolphins have sonar, right? They they do that thing where they, um, you know, they, they make noises and then it, it uh, 
uh, allows them to gauge distances via sonar. So fake smile, sonar, and there we go. Well, that was a tough puzzle for me, I have to say. I found that pretty tricky. Um, curious to hear how others how others did with this one. Uh, I had I was very fortunate to be able to put Baba O'Reilly in early. I think that was probably uh, one of my more helpful early gets because it gave me all of these crosses up here, and some of these things behave in a way suitable to one situation. In pain at the end of a race, say I mean these are fairly vague. They're probably. You know, you could imagine there being a few ways to say things like that. Uh, so this was very helpful because it it allowed me to put in at least several of the crosses pretty quickly. I didn't have any such similar experience down here, as it turns out. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, I mean, I guess I just uh, really building off of that, I kind of went pretty well through this whole uh, kind of diagonal swath of the grid and then just had a lot more trouble on the other half. So it really was a solve of two halves, I suppose. Um, and you know what? I'm not going to go into it in too much more detail because I just remembered I have quite a few clues from yesterday's or quite a few comments about yesterday's clues to read. So I should have got on with that, but that was a really interesting puzzle. It was very, I found it quite difficult. Do let me know how you fared with it in the uh, discord channel or the um, comments under the video. I am always curious to know. Uh, and this is one that I suspect at least some people will have found fairly tough. I did. Anyway, now let's discuss the clues from yesterday's puzzle. So let's get going. Dragon Traces and Victoria Rosichka both pointed this out. Dragon Traces says EpiPens are nothing to do with insulin. They're an uh, epinephrine, uh, parentheses, adrenaline delivery system to combat anaphylactic shock and other allergic reactions. They can also be used in cases of severe asthma attack. And um, Victoria Rogiska points out the same thing. Um, the insulin, but adds, the insulin pen you mentioned is a similar idea, but it's glucagon instead of epinephrine, hence the name EpiPen and epinephrine. One gets ingested with glucagon when they have severe hypoglycemia, which may be a cause of death. So thank you for clarifying that. Um, Dyer Crow explains the Krusty Crab is, is a fictional restaurant fictured in, fi uh, featured in SpongeBob SquarePants. It's SpongeBob's place of work as the restaurant's fry cook. I did have a bit of a suspicion maybe it was SpongeBob SquarePants just because of the oceanic connection. And it just seemed like, I don't know, it just seemed like maybe it might be. Um, but I wasn't, it was sort of a wild guess, so I didn't, I didn't mention it. But thank you for confirming that, Dire, dire Crow. All right, Dragon Traces, uh, conf as, I, as I was sort of scratching at my brain to remember, um, Martini and Rossi do produce the extra dry vermouth that I was trying to think of yesterday in reference to the Rossi answer in the, uh, in the crossword. And uh, they also produce, he points out, among other things, one of your favorite sparkling wines, Asti, from the Moscato Blanco grape. That is indeed one of the, one of the very, very common wine answers in the New York Times crossword. Maybe the official wine of the New York Times crossword. I don't know if it's been in there recently enough for me to, to want to make that declaration, but if it comes in a few more times soon, someone remind me that I, that I wanted to, to <laughs> offer that distinction. Anyway, Brian Parenti confirms that the C and C-SPAN does indeed stand for cable, as it stands for Cable Satellite Public Affairs Network. While broadcasting U.S. legislative sessions are its primary focus as a network, C-SPAN broadcasts broadcast the House, while C-SPAN 2 broadcasts the Senate, it runs other public affairs programming, e.g. debates, election cycle coverage, White House briefings, and even parliamentary sessions of other countries on occasion, whenever Congress is not in session. So there we have it. Um, Jim Bubalucki explains that Bill Clinton is not from Little Rock, in Arkansas, but actually from the city of Hope, Arkansas, which now that it's been pointed out, I do actually remember. Um, uh, Kathleen Quinn explains that Bill Clinton was the governor of Arkansas and Little Rock is its capital. Thus, in a sense, Bill Clinton came to the White House from Little Rock. And yes, these are things I knew but didn't quite remember. And I do, so <laughs> Jim Bobolucki says, I was too young and living in the wrong country at the time to know if this is true, but I'd assume there were a fair few campaign slogans based around his name, uh, the name of his hometown. Kathleen Quinn points out it wasn't actually hugely capitalized on the campaign, but I do myself personally remember, well, I don't even know if I remember this from the time. I might just remember this from seeing it later, but he, there, there was a moment when he 
talked about coming from a you know the coming from a place called hope or there's there's room for a place called hope or something like that so it came up occasionally but yeah i don't think it was a major uh, plank of the campaign anyway lost boys uh, explains that ennis is used as a breath freshener um uh, in uh, in India, where they serve it alongside meals, sort of like the after-dinner mint. That's very interesting. And so that's in reference to it being used in, in a sort of mint-like capacity from yesterday's puzzle. And uh, Waluigi the Master, which is quite a name, explains that Eli Apple is a player who flamed out on my favorite football team, the Giants, but he's carved out a somewhat decent role in the NFL. So there you have it, Eli Apple. That's a, that's a brand new name to me from yesterday. And finally, Brian explains that to snipe with a rifle comes from hunting snipes, which are very small, so accuracy is required. Uh, I think the idea of taking shots at someone may be the connection to snipe in that sense. So as I was wondering, yes, that all of the different meanings of, of snipe do, most likely anyway, connect in that regard. And there we go. All right, those were the clues from yesterday's puzzle, which means that is the conclusion of today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back, of course, for tomorrow's crossword, the Sunday puzzle, which I suspect will not be as difficult as today's, but will be larger, a big jumbo grid. So it probably will take longer to solve. So do join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. Uh -huh.